Call this meeting to order. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Casarelli? Here. Graziano? Here. Rovell? Here. Mayor Melman? Here. Sunshine? Pursuant to the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting is published in December 19, 2019, editions of the Star Ledger of Old Times. A copy of this notice has been posted on the Public Town Hall Bulletin Board, and a copy is on file in the Municipal Clerk's Office. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So the next item we're going to entertain is uh, obviously we're all here today for the combined conference regular meeting. We have some items on the agenda today that council members have put on. Again, for those of you who are new to this, this is basically a work session and you're going to hear different council members discuss different topics. Unfortunately, we're having these conversations while you are listening to us. Uh, there is no public participation at this portion of the meeting. Anything you hear during this portion, if you have a question, uh, you can ask later on during the public participation section of the meeting. So we have several items that are on today's uh, conference session. It seems like they're all put on by Councilman Cazzarelli. And again, it's, it's just a conversation amongst council members. You're basically an audience watching this. Any questions you may have that derive from this, you can certainly ask later during the public participation portion of the meeting. So we're going to begin. Councilman Cazzarelli is first up. He has spring events. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to go over a list of events we have. This way the whole council knows what's going on. Uh, myself and the mayor have been working on some of these events along with the Green Committee uh, to kind of get some uh, points for our town for a couple of various things. Uh, but I also have some other various events here. I just want to run through a couple of dates if uh, anyone wants to jot them down. Uh, they are in chronological order. So on March 2nd, we have a Irish flag raising in front of Town Hall. Uh, March 7th is actually the St. Patrick's Parade. April 2nd is one of the things we're doing with the Green Committee. It's going to be our first walk at work day where we're going to have our employees who want to participate walk around the block, uh, maybe about a half hour or so, and then come to a healthy lunch and a presentation by ShopRite's dietitian. Uh, at, I'm sorry, that was April? It is April 2nd, Second. Thursday, April 2nd. Thank you. I was going to do April 1st, and then it was going to be a big joke and they get big pizza joke. at the end, but we're going to keep it uh, healthy. Uh, March, the first day was March 2nd. March 2nd, Irish flag raising. March 7th, St. Patrick's Parade. April 2nd, Walk at Work Day. April 4th is a Saturday. That's going to be our color run, which will be the second annual color run. Um, April what? Color run? Fourth. 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 April 22nd is Earth Day. Uh, that day, the Green Committee, along with the high school, uh, I think, biology club, and the historical, uh, the Belleville uh, Historic Preservation Committee are going to do a, a work day at Camp Carragher during the day, which is a, a Wednesday. Um, they're going to be planting some, some plants we got a grant for. We're going to be installing a sign that says a little history of the park. Uh, so a couple things like that. That's April 22nd during the day. It is a Wednesday, um, but the, the classes are getting credit for it at the high school. So that's why it's on a, a weekday. And that's also Earth Day. And then finally, I have May 3rd. It's our first bike rodeo. Uh, I've been working with the chief and the mayor on this. Uh, basically, we got a grant. Uh, the mayor got a grant for, I think it was 100 helmets. There's a hundred bike helmets, I think. We think it was Yeah. We won. Yeah, you want to, right. Uh, so one of the ways we're going to distribute them is we're going to have a safety course, uh, and uh, our police officers are going to show proper ways to ride bikes. They're going to do, uh, you know, hand signals, stuff like that, and that's going to be a way that we're going to distribute the helmets to the kids that participate. When is that date? May 3rd. The exact location to be announced, but we'll find out this week. So. We have a few ideas. We have some ideas. That's yeah. a Sunday, right? Yeah. yeah. Just so it doesn't interfere with, I know baseball starts right before that. So we'll keep that on a Sunday morning or something. Uh, so that's all I have for events. I also have on uh, for the conference uh, Pocket Parks and Open Space. I distributed to the council. This was made by uh, Gabby Meany and myself. We, we took a walk around and saw uh, there was a park, not a little, uh, a little 
area of land by the high school that's fenced in. We got a lot of requests if we could remove the fencing, make it not look like a jail, and, uh, and make maybe a little pocket park over there. So uh, we have a little, little uh, slides of what it could look like potentially uh, with some nice landscaping, um, all done in-house. So that's that. And also, I had a meeting with uh, the manager and PCNG regarding some work that they want to do on the streets of Belleville. They had mentioned that uh, they would be willing to let us use some of their land if we wanted to make a dog park, which we've talked about in the past, and we don't have a lot of places to put it. So uh, I went around with the green team, and we found a, a pretty nice park. That could be a nice park next to the playground that's in between Mary and Emmett Street. Uh, there's no high-tension wires there. Uh, it's just an open space that's owned by PCNG. And with the manager writing a letter to them, with council's approval, they would uh, let us put a dog park there. Oh, so, so this would replace our previous location. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. They weren't crazy about having it on uh, busy streets. They wanted it to be a little less quiet and uh, have a little bit more parking. Both, yeah. was, well, both was their, their property. Yes. Yeah. yeah both was their property. Yeah. Uh, on union, union, and then we we had a meeting with board. them. They weren't crazy about well, it. They well, said one, it might be a little too busy. One location versus the other had less traffic. Right. Right. And it's, and it's up to us to maintain and... Right. We would basically have well, a whole harmless, we'd maintain it, we'd put the whatever equipment or whatever on there. Right. So uh, both these projects would qualify. We, we received a $125,000 yes. grant from yep. the state. Exactly. And we have to use solely for recreation. Right. Um, we did get the okay to put some murals up and, and cover that and recreation costs, but there's more than enough money there to, to do... These are very problems. simple projects, $2,000 each. And we have the grant money available, and we actually have to use it. That's 125,000 that was extra came in yep. after the budget was adopted at the state level. That has to be used for recreation. Wow. And open space. So that's all I have. Now, Adam, if anyone has any comments on that, comments, um, questions, yeah. suggestions. What's the, what's the question on on the pictures? The difference between the, the one by the high school and the one by the division. Yeah, that's, this is the existing with this fence on the bottom. That's also. That's not PCNG. No, no, that's yeah, not water. Where's PCNG? Is that the PCNG? PCNG is this one. This is the little highlighted one. Oh, okay. The high school, high school one is. The one by the high school would be water because that goes right to the reservoir. Right. That, that is yep. one of the means. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think but we're still going to secure that area though. Around the, yeah. Yeah. The water. Well, we had fenced that in not because of the water. It was an open area. No, we had because, fenced that in were because cutting, people kids were cutting through. through. But it's been open for years. For years. Just which is why Chief I always maintain you don't have to secure. Pipes inside the it's reservoir real. as much because they're You're really right. exposed. We'll go anywhere, right? Yeah. So that's I, our. And, and I'm all for it. I'm all for dog parking, not the whole thing. But how does it lie? How, what does the liability lie? Yeah. I don't know. I have to be with. What does the liability lie? If, we'll have to, if we'll have to check I have a dog, you have a dog, and I don't like you. The chip. Yeah. <laughs> and I bite. My dog bites you. Where does that? Where does that? Well, it, it, it has not. That's personal between the dog owner. Obviously, liability in the area will be on the township, meaning maintaining it, people fall, things like that. Gotcha. But with the dog park itself, if your dog is, is uh, you know, if I was walking my dog and I would have been to you, it's the same. It has okay. nothing, Belleville's not liable for that. Okay, but anybody who falls and gets hurt on right. that property, property sucks. Sucks. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's a little, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think we need dog parks. I think sure. okay. we're, I give them we need open time. space. Yeah. Right. The county built a beautiful one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't think many Bella people go to it. No. Uh, just want to bring the park. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's very nice. It's beautiful. Uh, Nutley has a nice one. It's also close to here. The, I, I would say that when we do it, uh, right across the bridge, Carney has a nice mm -hmm. dog park right along the water there. Yeah. It's, it's actually two different zones. One's for big dogs, one's for small dogs. And, and they did it That's right. You, you have a, a gate where you a double go in and unleash. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, a little bit of effort, you get the right. right. We, we it does not cost right. much money at all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But a little bit of effort. Also, Vin, if you need, I mean, I, I know other ones, like I said, the Park, yeah. plains of that yeah. There's a lot of lake take. I mean, you go to the pool, you go to Belvin now, you know where the dogs are at? <coughs> tennis courts. Oh, yeah. yeah. In the tennis courts. Yeah. I, I, I had a big dog that had a run, so. Yeah. Also, I have a. Anybody else while we're here? Nothing else on the agenda, so 
Unfortunately, at this point, we are going to have to go into executive session for to discuss information technology and to receive Captain Briner to discuss our active shooter recommendations. Unfortunately, we do need to clear the room to go into executive session. No action will be taken while we're in executive session, and you'll be notified as soon as we're done. It should be long. Motion yes. to go. I, I need a motion to second. Motion made and second. Clerk, call roll. Thank you. Councilmember Pazzarelli? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Mayor Matlin? Yes. <coughs> We received Captain Briner to discuss the active shooter recommendations. The second topic, information technology, we did not discuss an executive. We're going to discuss that right now. We're basically rejoining the combined conference with item number B, which would be Mr. Graziano. And Mr. Graziano, information technology. Yes, yeah, so I'd just like to give everybody an update on uh, where we stand right now with uh, the IT upgrades that we're looking to do across uh, Belleville, here in Town Hall, uh, DPW, fire, uh, the firehouses, and, uh, just across the board. We're looking to upgrade everything pretty much to bring us compliant and into today's world. I mean, we are so far back, it is scary. Basically a rip and replace. Rip and replace. Ripping everything out, replacing it all. Yes, yeah, so we've been working through the town manager and uh, are making good headway. So I just wanted to let everybody know where we stand with that. We, one of the items on today's agenda is an introduction to a bond to, to, mm -hmm. to fund that, basically. Find yes. Um, we are, as anybody that's listened to me speak in the, my manager, uh, mayor's reports for the last year or so knows of my IT uh, issues here in this building. We're outdated. We're a $72 million corporation with 1980 technology here. Uh, whether it's CAT 2 or CAT 3 in the walls, uh, whether it's the the $29 Wi-Fi router behind me, uh, we're drastically in need of, a, of an update here in technology. Uh, that's it. I mean, hardware expires. Hardware is, you have to get funds. Most towns have, with most corporations, 1% of their annual revenue is, is for IT. Uh, we have not funded that historically. We're trying to make do what we have, so we're discussing new laptops. We're still on old, outdated operating systems. We can't get new drivers installed. We can't really get good antivirus installed. Uh, we're at risk for hacking. We're at risk for phishing. Every other municipality's dealt with it. Uh, it's, this is nothing new. We've been talking about this stuff for a year now, and uh, we're finally getting close, thankfully. Steve? We talked a little bit about the board docs, and you know, maybe you want to update them on that, because I know we're pretty close with that. Yeah, so, Kelly, you want to give an update? We are almost ready. I still have some few things to work out with them, so I'm hoping next month or so we should be up and ready to sure. go. And we're going to run it parallel for a while, too. Correct. Yeah. Just to see how it works. We'll get both. Yeah, we're going to get both so everybody can agree. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. And being that we're still in caucus and the residents are listening to us have this conversation, for those who don't know, Board Docs is, a, is an online software that it's allows us to deal with the agendas. Right now, this might sound archaic to many of you, but uh, on the Fridays, Saturdays, our police department drives around hand delivering packets if they can find us. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they're, they're great at their job, they can't always locate us, so uh, there are times that we just don't get packets and we have to come pick them up. And again, our chief would be the first one to say, why are we being delivery men and women? Uh, so this would be all digital, all online, we can view it online, can make annotations, make notes, we can communicate. Uh, with the clerk and the manager and approve things. And I will be sending everyone a link this week to start your training on the auctions. Plus, well, it's an enormous waste of paper. Enormous and waste of paper. And, and just it does the archiving. And the time. It, it, it does the archiving. And, yeah, and so, so the, the other piece of it is just to put everybody on the same page. Board Docs is what the Board of Education uses. Mm -hmm. This is iCompass. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, it's, it's, it's a diversion for us. Similar, but it, it's similar, but it's for us. Okay. For us. Anybody else? We're going to move forward. Mm -hmm. Nope. We're done. So we're going to item number six, if my Roman numerals are right, uh, approval of minutes. Can I just no. call Marie, please? Oh, my bad. We did not, uh, Councilman Burke was not available earlier on. We're not going to get on the phone. She might be watching us online. Councilwoman? Yes? We're here, ready to go into our regular meeting. Okay. The record reflect, Councilman Burke has now joined us. 
We are at item number six, Councilwoman. We are at the approval of minutes. Can we move it? You want yeah. to move it together? Sure. We'll make a motion to move it together. I'm going to abstain from B and second. We have a motion made and second to move both items together. Councilman Gravel is abstaining from B. Council member Cazarelli? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Rovell? Yes. Trumelo Burke? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Board of the Manager? Um, Mayor, tonight my uh, manager's report, I'm certainly going to yield my time to your report. Some of the topics that I would discuss, I'm sure, are on your uh, punch list that include the uh, coronavirus update, possibly, or water filter dis distribution. And I know something very uh, dear and important to you is our uh, Washington Avenue uh, Improvement Committee. We're making some, some great brown pounds uh, with who's, that. Who's the we in that? Oh, there's a... a we, we passed the resolution asking you for the, right. so, for the report. Right, so exactly. And my report is being assisted by my uh, colleagues over in the Public Works Department, uh, Tom Herrick, who uh, him and I had a meeting tonight specifically on our streetscape grant. Uh, the town of Belleville will be receiving $1.5 million to improve Washington Avenue, which will include a portion of Washington Avenue, sidewalks, new lighting, uh, trash receptacles, new signage. So that 1.5 is going to be part of the task of uh, keeping Washington Avenue uh, beautification. So um, I'm happy to report that that, that grant, that $1.5 million grant, is uh, we'll, we'll be talking about it very shortly, and we're going to use some of that streetscape money to uh, not only improve Washington Avenue, but certainly maintain it and, and keep it beautiful. Thank you. So I'm not actually speaking on the coronavirus, so I know you've been in contact with our health director. Did you want to update us on that one? Sure. So we have been, um, we have been in contact on a daily basis with the state of New Jersey Department of Health. They issue not only briefings on what's going on in the state, specifically in New Jersey, as it pertains to this virus, but also in the county. So there's actually uh, conference calls that we get invited to listen in on. We've been in contact with infection control over at Cloud Mouse Hospital, because again, they would have firsthand information. Right now, from the town's uh, obligation or, or responsibility, there is nothing for us to do other than that in the event that um, there was any kind of um, notification, we would have to report it if it wasn't reported to us. Um, knock on wood, Belleville has nothing to be concerned at, at this time, and we will continue to monitor it very closely. Okay. Um, anybody questions for Matthew? If not, I'm going to go to the next item, which is report of the mayor. So just to, uh, you did remind me of something because you just uh, touched on Corona. Uh, from my understanding, I, I've been in contact with Mayor Baraka in Newark, and uh, they were set to receive, at one point it was only four different airports in the country, I think it's now to nine or 11, that were receiving planes that had been to or through China. And the rule of thumb was this, anybody showing signs was gonna be immediately quarantined uh, Nork only had 14 beds available, so Belleville would have been utilized for that. Anybody else not showing signs would be under a mandatory 14-day quarantine, whereby they have to check in every hour on the hour. Um, and that would be really up to the municipality they land in. So if they land in Belleville, we'd have to do that. Um, so thankfully right now we're under no obligation to do such a thing, because uh, I, I don't think they've shown any signs of anybody coming in besides that they own uh, Cruz. Is there anything else, Chief? Yes. We, we do have a United Thank Flight attendant in the back, so I just want to keep her in the back there. Just so stay over there, man. Thank God we have the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, filter distribution is ongoing. Uh, we still have the, the website online. You can still register. We are getting through the entire list. It's a process. We don't just hand out filters to everybody. You would have to be qualified. What makes you qualified? One, you don't live in Silver, Silver Lake because Nork is handing out filters to you. Two, you live in a house that was built uh, before 1950 or so, and you live in a multi uh, uh, anything less than probably a four family, all deemed by our engineer who looks through every single address and then advises us on eligibility of that. That's ongoing. We've handed out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of filters, which is great. Very happy about that. 
Uh, we had an impromptu walk this weekend with the town manager. We are focusing now as hopefully we, we approach spring. Um, I, don't want any, I don't want any snow in February, but we're going to be handling some quality of life things. We're going to be looking at where people are parking, the crosswalks they're taking up. We're going to be looking at graffiti. Uh, we're always got an eye on litter. So it's nice to see that the Washington Avenue streetscape is working, but we need to expand that and get our employees that are on the street to be a little more proactive in seeing this stuff and actually handling it themselves proactively. Uh, you may have seen, it was a little confusing because government communication is often confusing. You may have seen a lead advisory that went out from the municipality last week. By law, we have to do that. So by law, we test quarterly. We then take those quarterly results if you are an actionable level which would be 15 parts per billion or north of that, you have to action that. You have to notify it, you have to notify the residents of it, and you have to let them know what actions are being taken. As much as that sounded bad, uh, and it, of course we don't ever want to report an actionable level of lead, when you compare it for the last couple of quarters, it is going down. Just as I predicted, just as our engineer predicted, just as our water people have predicted. Merck changed their water treatment several months ago, and that treatment is showing signs of working its way through the system, and the levels are going down. We were, we averaged out, it's complicated, you're talking about 90 percentile, but as we blended it out, we're at 16 percent part, uh, I'm sorry, 16 parts per billion, actionable is 15. That number has been consistently coming down, therefore, I don't want to make any predictions, but I'm optimistic that our next quarter will be below that 15 parts per billion threshold and we will not be reportable or actionable. So actually, as much as you read that and it, it sounds like, oh my God, there's lead in the water, when you compare that to previous quarters, it's coming down. We believe by the next quarter it will be non-actionable. Uh, Black History Month event, it is February. Last year we had our first ever Black History Month event. This year we had invited uh, double favorite son, Lonnie Bunch. Unfortunately, because of his schedule now being the curator or the secretary of the entire Smithsonian, unable to join us for our own event. Uh, I did speak to Dr. Tomko. It is the fifth year that our school district is doing a Black History Month event. Uh, we are going to participate in their program, which is going to be on Thursday the 20th, I believe. So the school district does a great job in their program, and the township is going to take a, a slightly active part in that and basically combine our two events into one. You'll be hearing me talk in the future about census. This is the year for census. They have been in heavy communication with the township of Belleville. I said it previously, 10 years ago, Belleville was counted, but we never mattered. Uh, this year, I'm adamant that we will be counted. We do have a team here inside Town Hall that's been training with census, and we'll be having uh, some open meetings to get people to actually work. We will be paying people to work, $22 an hour, the federal government pays you. And our goal is to go into the high, uh, they call them high frequency districts or districts that get less counts in. And we're going to be sending teams of people in there to make sure we get counts. Because it, it counts towards congressional seats, towards funding, towards a lot of things. And I actually want to make sure that, that we do that. Um, that was it. You heard some events from Councilman Cazzarelli coming up in the, near, in the near future. But that was really it from my mayor's report. Uh, committee reports. I know we're, we're, we're kind of slim here and we've got a caucus. Uh, Councilman Graziano talked about IT. Councilman Ravel mentioned IT. Councilman Cazzarelli, Deputy Mayor, talked about some events. But is there any other committee of things that we've been working on? Not committee, but just things. I don't know if it's now or later at new, uh, new business to share some stuff or discuss. Talk, talk about some stuff. Do you want to know? Okay. So just to share as you, Mayor, walks, <laughs> walks around you know, with, with, uh, with the manager. I, too, do the same thing. So my question, you on I know you did. So, so, the, so the question is, um, we see, and I walk all over, not just my ward, I, at Councilman at Large, I walk all over, and we see things and we report things. Do we have anybody on payroll that does this job? Or is it just up to... Proactively not. Proactively not. That's it. We've talked numerous times, even in prior administrations, and numerous times since I've been here, about at least four part-time employees one for each ward that then can go out and proactively do this. The problem is we only have X amount of inspectors and they're doing home inspections, CO inspections, building inspections, uh, footing inspections. They respond when somebody like me sends the manager a text or something like that, but there's nobody proactive. And I think that's an issue. We also have an issue because we don't clearly have a defined property maintenance department here. 
uh, we have a building department, right. and it's those inspectors go there. out and do construction mm -hmm. inspections. But because if we don't become proactive, it's going to get worse. I am. You have my full support. And anybody here to do something proactive, mm -hmm. part time for inspectors or something like that. I've had conversations with the manager about this. And this isn't new. We've talked about this for a year. I know. I just how to get the ball rolling. The manager. The manager. Get the ball rolling. Absolutely. Recommendations, options, something. I think, I think we're all on the same page, and certainly it's a, a much needed uh, right. task. Maybe you could uh, give us some options at the next council meeting. Absolutely. An action report, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Just we, a little faster than the last one. We, we, the we fast action. action. That was we fast action. And then, and then the last thing, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, uh, the last meeting you discussed share, shared services. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I, I attended the Board of Education meeting last night, like I do occasionally. And there's something coming up, and it's, it was there, it's on the planning board, right? And it's not for us to approve, it's just for a courtesy. But here, as a taxpayer and as a council member, they're looking to build, the Board of Education is looking to build a facility for buses. Okay? So, as a shared service... To work we, on them or to work? To work. Oh. Right, so right now, they're all housed at number, number 10 school. And this is just, as a taxpayer, right? Going to build a piece of property there. We, with... The manager doing a great job down at DPW, cleaning it all up and our, you know, what we want to do and clean that off of there. Why wouldn't we look at utilizing, because they go for gas every day or whatever. Why wouldn't we look at utilizing the space, number one, sharing the, 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 the people, the workers who are mechanics. We have diesel mechanics. They don't. We, as Belleville, can save money. Let, and again, not saying where to put that money to, but wherever that goes, put it somewhere else. But here's a perfect time to start shared services. And this is something I know coming down from the state. Yep. I know it's town sure. to town, but here, we're in town. We're Belva. Why not share the services? There are grants available for that, too. And, and that's I love the idea, of, right. I love the idea of shared services. We might be a little late on this one. They're coming before the planning board on Thursday. Uh, and, and I, but again, I brought it up. I brought it to, to pass to, to, to you know manager Tucci last year, and I had some conversation. But I think it's how do we start get ahead? School district on that one. On, hmm? that one. on that one's probably going to start with the school district. Up there. But I, I'm, I'm all for it. shared service. Why not? I know. I, I, everybody doesn't like change, but here's a good application mm -hmm. yeah. to, 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 for for taxpayers to save money. There's no point in having two sets of mechanics, two sets of it's Maybe home rule. Everybody wants home rule, which is sad, but that's the reality. I just wanted to share that because even though, like you said, it's it's past us, mm -hmm. but we need to start discussing it more. However, that conversation happens. If we can't do it out out of town, let's start doing yeah. it in town. Mm -hmm. I'm for that. Yeah. Well, maybe the ma uh, our manager could reach out to the superintendent tomorrow on his day off. And, uh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll definitely reach out to VA on the floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Is it his day off? Is it school off? No, no they're off Monday. Oh, right. So you're fine. You can I'm fine. Only Belmont Bell Town Hall is closed tomorrow. Yeah, 24 7. You're off tomorrow. The town's off tomorrow. So, yeah, we, I mean, obviously, the. the, the the feeling, Mr. Manager, is obviously we, we have a good working relationship with the school district. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's see if we can maximize that. Mm -hmm. Really, that's, that's it. Uh, and I know that Dr. Tompkins has always been great. We we had a plow from him. We give him guys. They give us guys. No, no doubt. But I'm formalizing just, it would exactly. actually save money. Mm -hmm. I get it. I hear you. I'm perfect on that. All right. That's going to conclude our committee reports and communications. And received from Verizon a check in the amount of $261,565 for the use of municipal right of way. The request received from the Belleville Soccer Association for permission to use the municipal stadium football field from March to June on Mondays through Fridays, 5 to 9.30 p.m., Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and for the fees to be waived. So we need a motion on that count. Well, no, through the manager and through the record Second, the last year. Last, yeah. last, last year, year we accepted the Tucci communication when they talked to the record right. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. yeah, and the, the rule of thumb that has been in place and will continue to be in place is coordination. Uh, well, coordination, but available will always have the priority. Right, right. right. And, and then the same thing, they did the same letter last year. And yeah, same it was work, whatever they did last yeah, year. As long as. We are not using the bill. Oh, right. And even though the fees are waived, they still made a few 
con contributions to yeah, the Yeah, and I would certainly defer that to, 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 to Steve on the... But that's something that you mm -hmm. deal with with the rest right. of the that's BSA. That's not really yeah. appropriate for us. The, yeah. the, okay. 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 So we just accept the communication, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. See? See request received from the Ironbound Soccer Club for permission to use the Nussville Stadium football field on Friday, March 13th from 6 to 10, Saturday, March 14th from 8 to 8, and Sunday, March 15th from 8 to 7. Again, same thing. Same thing. Same thing. Manager, uh, rec department. Understood. D letter of resignation received from Catherine Laredo from the Brent Leveling Board. Okay. Next item, we have ordinances. Ordinance number one for introduction and ordinance deleting and replacing in its entirety Chapter 21, Flood Damage Prevention of the Revised Ordinances of the Township of Belleville. Motion introduced. Second. Motion made. Second. Clerk, call roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Schumelberg? Yes. Mayor Bellman? Yes. Ordinance number two for introduction. Bond ordinance providing for the upgrade of network infrastructure at all facilities and the removal of soil dirt and fill dirt from water mains and water service jobs in and by the town of Belleville in the county of Essex, New Jersey, appropriating $825,000, therefore authorizing the issuance of $785,714 bonds or notes to the township to finance part of the cost thereof. Motion introduced. Second. Motion made. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Casarelli. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Robel. Yes. Strumlo Burke. Yes. Mayor Melham. Yes. Ordinance number three for introduction. Ordinance approving the first amendment to the financial agreement for long-term tax exemption by and between the township of Belleville and Silver Lake Urban Renewal LLC. Motion introduced. Second. Motion made. Second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Casarelli. Yes. Graziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Strumlo Burke? No. I abstain. Mayor Millman? Yes. Uh, that, that order is carried, correct or not? Mm -hmm. Yes. And then abstain is like a no vote? Yes. Okay. So, uh, ordinance for public hearing, second and final reading. Ordinance number one for public hearing and ordinance to amend the revised general ordinances in the Township of Belleville, Chapter 8-16, Handicapped Parking Spaces. Motion to open public. Second. Motion made and second to open public. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Cosarelli? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Strumlo Burke? Yes. Mayor Mellon? Yes. Motion to close public to open. Uh, move for final adoption. Second. Motion made and second to close public and move for final. Council Member Casarelli. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Robel. Yes. Strumlo Burke. Yes. Mayor Melman. Yes. Ordinance is adopted. Ordinance number two for for public hearing. Ordinance approving the financial agreement for long term ta tax exemption by and between the town of Belleville and Franklin Park of Belleville Urban Renewal LLC. Motion to move for public hearing. Second. Motion made, second to open public hearing. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Casarelli. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Robel. Yes. Strumlo Burke. Yes. Mayor Melman. This was just the open public comment. Yes. Yes. No. We're we're in public. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Frantantoni. Yeah. Good evening, Mayor. Uh, this is just to change the agreement. This one, number yes. two. Yes. Yes. Well, right. I think uh, they all kind of relate to the same thing. Well, no, I think they're two different issues. So okay. The second one is a financial thing. Mm -hmm. This one, again, I went to the planning board and uh, the developer uh, made me the, the public who was spoken out of this before said exactly what we've been saying for years, right? This, uh, he's reducing from, I think, 68 units to 24 units, the second phase. Right. Mm -hmm. That what this is about. Yeah. He had the approvals for 68. He's building less units. Yeah, I know that. Okay. And there was some of us who were objectives to it. But now the developer proved us correct. If you were at the planning board meeting when he got this uh, amendment uh, changed down to 24 units, he said because the banks wouldn't loan him under 68 units. And that's what's happening with a lot of these things. You've got the Terry Street one who stood right here, the developer, and said if you didn't get a tax abatement, 
The bank wouldn't loan money, I had the transcript for that. This is what's going on. All these high density things, they're asking we, the taxpayers, who are overburdened taxpayers. So now that he reduced the units, you're still against it? The what? Now that he reduced the units, you're still against it? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. well, well, the reason I think you want to hear when it happened, Mr. Ravel, Mr. Cazzarelli, well, Mr. Cazzarelli wasn't here either, but that property was given to the township of Belton by Jergens Lotion with a deed restriction, right? For recreation purposes only. The then town attorney, uh, Mr. Gashion, miraculously, you know, we could have beat it. I couldn't afford 20,000 legal fees to fight it. That property was illegal take, taken from the town. Okay, but I need you to speak on this order here. Well, that's what I'm saying. On this, on this one, number two, I'm making the point that we, the citizens, were correct. The bank said 68 units was not good. They weren't loaning the money for that. That's actually so not we come down to the point. That's your opinion. Well, look at the transcript of the plan board. That's what the developer said. It's not my opinion. It's not what the developer testified. Actually, the answer to the question is the federal, the federal tax credits for senior housing dried up. Therefore, he cannot build 68 units because the federal tax credits dried up for subsidized senior housing. Therefore, he's going market rate and building less units. That's the actual answer. Yeah. Again, he didn't want to do with financing again, the bank. He didn't want to lay out my investments, all money out of my own pocket I invested. He didn't want to invest his money, whether it was local, our tax abatements, or whether it was federal. This is what they've got, and it's getting sick. These million, multi-millionaires are making all this money, and we the taxpayers, whether it's local, state, or federal, and you know, in the state, they're starting to cut back on these tax abatements. They're finding out that they're phony. They're not producing the jobs that they were promised at all. So we got to stop this tax abatement to these. Thank but you. I'm glad the developer justified what we've been saying for years. Anybody else? George? Um, so I'm just a little. There's two ordinances, two and three. Are they the same developer? There's two different yeah. names there. I'm just trying to figure it out. Yeah, one's the financial. Well, I'll have Mr. Martino explain it when he's done. But one's the financial agreement, and then there's the amendment. They could explain it better than I can. One's the agreement, one's the amendment. No, so, so but, but it's the same developer. The same is that we same, 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 same property. Same property. Same property. One is to amend the the. One is for the financial agreement, the other is to amend from the 68 to the 24. Okay, so, uh, but it's the same developer. It's just yeah, the same, 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 same one. He's got different LLCs. Now, just uh, what he said there about a market rate. So, in other words, you could be a, a multi-millionaire and still rent in those places. There's no, uh, there's nothing for seniors who really have a need in there. They just have to pay the market rate. Well, the first is. phase of the wing, the first 68 units of the first wing was was all subsidized with the federal. federal they were credit. subsidized the first. Right. Those those subsidies have dried up. Okay. Therefore, he's not building six. This is everything you would think some people in this audience would want. It's less units, no, less no, density. No, I put that more last. You told me that last thing. Right, I remember. And, and market rate. I mean, this is everything you would think you would want. So, so okay, that's fine. But how many? So how many years are they getting a break for? It's the same. Uh, it's the 25 same again? One that was a, it was already approved, by the way. Right. Well, all we're doing is amending the wording from 68 units to 20. It was already approved. Right. No, I, I remember you so saying that. Yeah, against this now, we're abstaining from it now. Already voted for it, by the way. So, so basically, just last question: What percentage would they be with the with the tax exemption they're getting? What rate are they going to be paying? Say they should be paying $100,000 a year. How much are they going to be paying? 20,000 a year for the next amount of years? What percentage are they going to be paying? that the normal taxpayer would have to pay. What kind of break are they getting? What does that translate to in dollar amount? You know what I'm saying? No, I don't. Know. In other words, here, say you have a house. You're paying no, no, 20000 What percentage are they going to be paying what they should have been paying if they didn't get that? That's not how pilots work. Just so you know. work. So, but but that, I just want to clarify this one thing. For those of you who think that, that a pilot is a break off the taxes, a percentage, it's not true. That's the first thing you need to learn about pilots. Pilots are a percentage of the revenue, not a break off your taxes. So you have to put that in perspective. If anybody who thinks that it's a discount off your taxes, a percentage, it's not true. You're paying, you're paying the municipality a portion of your revenue, so we're equal partners with you. 
You can't build that project uh, at market rate taxes, therefore you give us, your partner, the township, a percentage of your revenue. So please do not think it's a well, That's why I'm asking break. you the question. But you need to know that because yeah, I see but a you lot know what of people and I read a lot I of I wouldn't be asking those questions if I had the financials. So that's why I have to ask you the question. Also, this is better um, because the rate's higher than the prior, the first 68 units, or the first right. number it's of units. Actually, uh, the first one was 25. This is 10 years, I think. Right, but the rate's higher, and because there's no subsidy, they're getting market rate, which means their gross is greater, so they're playing a higher percentage on a higher gross. So if the pilot, if they had to pay us 10% of the revenue, but if the rents were subsidized, we'd be getting less. Okay. But since the rates are, the, the rents are market rate, we're actually getting more money. In the first one, I think it was 6.6% .6 because it was subsidized. So now, now it's 10% 10. 10 of a higher amount. Of a higher number. It, it makes sense. It's it's not practical. Well, now no, I get a little better be picture of it, you know. Anybody else? Just put through the chair, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Uh, is it still age restricted or no? This is age restricted it's market still, rate. It's still age restricted. Age restricted market rate. Which means, Councilman, yes. a retired cop, a retired teacher, a retired fireman who cannot go into that building in the other wing because, of their, and because of their pension can now go. Mm -hmm. We can keep bubble residents here. You sell your house, you can stay here. Mm -hmm. It's a positive. Anybody that thinks it's not a positive is not dealing with reality. Sir? Mr. Mayor, Council, um, my name is Louis Munez. I'm 49 Lake Street in Silver Lake. Um, I'm actually, uh, I want to bring attention to an uh, intersection in Belleville. Hold on. No, nope. this is, so this is uh, public participation. Okay. Welcome well, back to you. This right. is public participation on this particular order. No problem. Yeah. Phyllis Francis, I just want to ask a question that I don't understand. Will they be paying the market rate of the taxes? Or are they getting a reduced rate? Uh, there, there are no taxes on that property, which are prior approvals, by the way. So they had gotten a pilot years ago. They're only amending it now because they're they're building less units. But they're paying their 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 percentage of revenue. Forget about discount of taxes. Their percentage of revenue on the other half of the building was about 6.25 percent. Now they're paying 10 percent. They're paying more of the revenue, and their revenue is more because it's market rate. And they're not paying any taxes That's at all? That's a pilot. All? Pilot is a payment in lieu of taxes. That's sick. Thank well, you. it's not the first time, and this was prior approved. Yeah, I know. You're but acting like you just heard this for the first time. Something's got to change. It's you have to understand what, what it is. It's actually what needs to change. I do understand. I don't think you do. Anybody else? I'll tell me I don't. I do. We can debate anytime you want. Anytime. Motion. To Anybody? On this particular ordinance? No. Motion to close. Motion to close. Move, move for final action. Second. Motion to close. Move for final adoption. Uh, clerk will roll. Councilmember Cazarelli. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Rovell. Yes. Strubelo Burke. Yes. Mayor Malhenna. Yes. Ordinance number so. three for public hearing. Ordinance for approving the First Amendment to amended financial agreement for long-term tax exemption by and between the Township of Belleville and Mill Street Development uh -oh. and Renewal LLC. Motion Oops. open public. Do you want to go back? Yeah, she, she has every right to go back. Just, Councilwoman, do, do you want to change your vote? Change your vote? From the yes, yes, no, no, because I, I'm, I'm, on the, I'm on the phone, Kelly, but I, I wasn't I had to go you know where I had to do, and I want, I want to abstain on two and three. Well, we're not at three yet, so at two. Oh, so the, two. two, 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 two. I just so want two you would like to abstain, Councilwoman. Yeah. Okay, really sure, noted. I want to make sure she agrees, though. Councilwoman, can you hear me? Councilwoman? Kelly, can you tell me? No, I can't. Tell it. I'm having a hard time hearing. You okay. are abstaining on ordinance number two for final reading, correct? Which is, the, we're amending the agreement for the age-restricted houses in the first quarter. Now we're amending the agreement? Yes. Oh, All right. Well, I'm abstaining on, the, on two and three. Okay. okay. Duly noted. All right. Public abstain is a no vote, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, now we're on uh, ordinance number three. Did we open public? I forgot what we did. Did we open the public? She read. Open. She read. She did. Yeah. Thank yes. you there. Okay, so we're open? Yep. Uh, yes. We're open for public hearing on ordinance number three. Yes. Mr. Grant, can I tell you? Yes, Mr. Mayor. 
answer to Mr. Droz wasn't absolutely correct. Uh, I didn't think it would he be. asked you what percentage of the taxes they won't be paying. And again, I refer to the developer who came here. Can you tell us what percentage of the taxes, since you're going to correct me, why don't you tell me what the percentage of the taxes of the bank? Well, if you let me finish, you always get to work very right? nuts. Don't let me answer. answer. Two complete I want to say it's correct. Not I just alone, want to Mr. Mayor. If you want to forward, then take the forward. If you're going to have the public speak, let them speak. Speak. The developer for Terry Street stood right here. I'm, I'm, I'm curious about this ordinance, not Terry Street. Exactly. And the reason I'm bringing it up is this public here. I can say on what I want. On this particular ordinance, not Terry Street. Not Terry Street. On this ordinance, why I object to? Let, then let me preface it. I object to giving the tax abatement. Perfect. And this is. There's no taxes. You said there's no tax. This is a payment in lieu of taxes. The developer for Terry Street said if he had paid a fair market rate of taxes, that's the exact word he used, and we have the transcript, uh, of 4,400, this was eight, ten years ago, he says the project would not be viable. That's the but for argument that actually makes you a pilot. Sure. Exactly. So they're not paying the equivalent share of taxes that the same homeowner would pay if they had the same dwelling. If that was, if that had no tax abatement, they'd be paying taxes. I don't know. Like, the, well, I'm giving you an example. He said 40, 4,500. With the uh, the tax abatement, the pilot, he's only going to be paying about 1,500 to 2,000, less than half. So if you answer Mr. Droz's question, it would probably be about half of what the legitimate taxes should be. So that's your answer when you I'm said you had the answer to the percentage of their well, bank? Well, those are facts. It's not my opinion. And it's backed up by these developers that talk about it. And not only that, I've got the other town meetings where they fight this. Right now, Montclair is fighting. A group of citizens are fighting that Lackawanna project. These tax abatements have to end. The taxpayers are getting killed. You know, so they, they have to end. But again, like Mr. Drove said, the ordinance says their market rates, no income limit. So potentially, like he said, a millionaire can live there. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And then the rest of us who aren't millionaires, we're subsidizing with this pilot. So you're getting 6 or 10 or 10 percent, but it's not the equivalent of uh, the same apartment if it had no tax abatement, it would be two or three times higher the actual taxes that that person would have to pay. So that's why these these pilots are killing us. And again, the developers yeah, are making millions of dollars. That's the only thing that could save us at this huh? point. We have a difference and, of opinion. And, and the other thing, they, they talk about these luxury apartments, how great they are, and I keep saying, it, not one of these developers want to live in Belleville or the other towns that they're building tax abatement. You know, I mean, uh, Mr. Nardello, you know, bragged about his luxury Essex Park and all that. Where he loves, he lives in a beautiful, secluded gate. So can we keep your comments on this one from time to time? And not yeah, well, Nardello. I object to it. And I ask you not to vote for this tax abatement. We're tired of giving our properties away, and we are paying these astronomical taxes. Last year, you raised this the ordinance. It's not about the pocket, Mr. Dollars. Frantz, all right. It's what? This ordinance is about the financial agreement, not we, we did the pilot already. That's, that was the previous order. No, I think you're wrong. This is the pilot. Be the first time. The other one was to amend it from 68 to 24. No, it's the this other way. The it's the other way around. The what? It's the other way around. The first one was See, the, the pilot. The first the second one says one long-term tax exemption. That would be the pilot, Mr. Frantantone. The, the third one is for the amendment from 68 to 24. This one is the financial agreement. Well, the, first one was the, the first one set the rates for a financial agreement. The second one reduces the amount reduces of units. The amount so you're arguing against reducing the units at this point. Yeah. No, so the right. Right. if we take your advice and we vote this down, he's going to build more units. Okay? No, no, no. no, no. Don't try to put words in my mouth. You know, I don't think you're that slick, Mr. Mayor. Because people are starting to find out that you're a, a real conniver with words, you know? I wish. So this is whatever you want. Again, if it's so you're against the reduction in units. I'm against giving them tax abatement, this, which caused the residents to pay. You're not speaking on that, Mr. Frank D'Antoni. You're speaking on the wrong ordinance then. So I need you to keep your comments to this, to this financial agreement. 
The first one is fast. reducing it from 86 to 24 units. No. 68, 68. No? Well, then you got it wrong in the agenda here. What is 68? This is OR1 number 2. Is that what you have? Ordinance approving the financial agreement for a long-term tax. That's the tax exam. That one's passed. We already passed that one. You spoke on that one. Now we're talking about amending the financial agreement, which really talks about the reduction in units. This number three is not the reduction in units. Number two was. I'm being advised by council. Well, I got both of them here that you gave to the public. All right. So I don't know. The council's been wrong before. Yeah, I'm glad you maybe you just mix them up. We're going to get you a clarification. He could be wrong. He's not perfect. That's why he's sitting right next to me to advise us. I was wrong once, too. Later I found out I was mistaken. Good. Okay. Uh, okay. Counselor? So, you fall at, your at, sword, first, at first, no. No. At the first reading, okay, ordinate, they were, they're switched between the last agenda and this agenda. Mm -hmm. So, on this agenda, they're in a different order. Right. On this agenda, ordinance number two is, was the, uh, was the financial agreement and the amendment to the financial agreement. Uh, not the amendment to the financial agreement, approving the financial agreement. Ordinance number two on today, for second reading, February 11, 2020, is the financial agreement. Order three, ordinance three on, on 21120, specifically in the third whereas paragraph, states the financial agreement provided for enti ent entities' construction on the property of a low and moderate income rental apartment co complex in two phases with the initial phase of consisting of 86 units, and then it goes on to say reducing the units to 24 units with an increase in parking spaces in the... So ordinance number three that we're Martina, discussing. That's a number two, not number three. I don't know what you're looking at. I'm looking what at the ordinance... What was presented to the public on the new file tonight? And what's, the, what's on the board outside? Well, just look at the titles, Mr. Francantoni. I, I am. Okay, and, and the title... That says, approving the financial agreement for long-term tax exemption by buying between the Township of Belleville and Franklin Park of Belleville Urban Renewal LLC is ordinance number two tonight. Can you confirm that? Mr. Right. Anthony? That's 86 down to 24. I, 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 we're, we're looking at two different things. Well, okay. well then you guys screwed up and somebody screwed up because this I didn't bring him here tonight. We got it right from there from but this that's what he just got from the clerk. Yeah. Isn't that what I have? That's right. Yeah. It's, it's right here. Let me see what you're... Yeah. Could I see what you're holding? So... Was that number two? What he just read? And he said it was number, number three. number three. This is hmm? three. That's for, that was from meeting ago. This is tonight. This is the second time. It was two at the last time. meeting. It's three now. And this one is what? That one's two for tonight. Two now? Three, yes. So they go like this. Like that. You were looking at the first date. That's why they I read it. They reversed at the dates, last Vinny. meeting. There's different dates. There's different, there's different, there's different dates, Vinny. From the different meetings. Eh? That's why I read it. They did switch. They did switch. All right. That's, yeah. You switch them around. All right. That's what's wrong. Is this the second time, Mr. Frantantoni, you're wrong? If we're at... Again, American, American guy. Again, I oppose. Who's being sarcastic before we're joking with each other? Yeah, okay. I think we're joking. I really? oppose these tax abatements, and there's more and more towns now that are fighting them. So you're going to find out this is not better than in the township, as, as you proved last year with a 10% or a $6.2 million increase in the budget. Okay. So let's get the money from them, and we can reduce the tax. Let them pay their fair share. And you can reduce the burden on the rest of the taxpayers of Bell. Anybody else on this on this number three? Hi, Bill. Michael Sheldon. I just can you clarify one thing. Um, I, I understand that the number of units in this edition is being reduced from 68 to 24. Um, in the whereas clause that Mr. Martino just read, he said, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but it says low 
It's being built for low to moderate income families. The original, families, the original. right? But it's also going to be market rate. So, is, is that an inconsistency? How, how are how how are low to moderate income families going to be able to afford to move in to a market rate facility? Is that do you understand what I'm, I'm getting at? It doesn't seem. It doesn't seem consistent. You're the entire it, that that par that whereas paragraph was referring to what was originally in the, the financial agreement. Okay, the original subsidy. That's what that was. Which is why we're amending it. It's saying it's do what happens in an ordinance. You describe what's happening mm -hmm. from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. That paragraph describes what yes. happens at the beginning. If you read later on, it then says it is now being amended. From yes. low and moderate income having to operate as the same market rate senior housing. So all that, it, it, it is inconsistent because it's being changed from low and moderate income to market rate. So 68 low and moderate income down to 24 market rate. Market, all right, all right. That's what's happening in those whereas paragraphs. All right. just, you know, I was hoping that we would have the you know, the system so finally we'd be able to at home at our luxury we'll be able to read the details of these things it's very difficult you guys always have access to all the verbiage we're just trying to absorb things as quickly as possible it's hard to read things confusion. when you get look at them right. when you get here right. get it and that's why kelly's working towards getting right. right. um, eye comfort so right. that everybody can see it and be, I'm be looking ready. forward to it thank you thank you anybody else on this particular order Motion to close public and move for final adoption. Second. We have a motion made and second to close public and move for final adoption. Councilmember Cazarelli. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Robel. Yes. Trumelo Burke. Yeah, I, I told we abstained on that. We have to vote. We abstain now, correct? Yes. Mayor Melham. Yes. The ordinance is approved. Ordinance number four for public hearing and ordinance to amend and ordinance creating permanent positions and adopting reclassification and compensation plans. Motion open for public. Second. second. Motion made and second open for public. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cozzarelli? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Jumelo Burke? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. Motion, motion to close public and move for final adoption. Second. Motion. Motion made second. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Cozzarelli? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Jumelo Burke? Yes. Mayor Melham. Yes. The ordinance is approved. Ordinance number five for public hearing and ordinance to amend an ordinance creating permanent positions and adopting reclassification and compensation plans. Motion moved for public hearing. Second. Motion made second to open public hearing. Clerk, call the roll. Ca Council member Cazarelli. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Robel. Yes. Strumelo Burke. Yes. Mayor Melham. Yes. Motion to close public and move for final adoption. Second. Motion made and clerk will roll. Council Member Cazarelli? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Strumelo Burke? Yes. Mayor Melman? Yes. The ordinance is approved. You want a motion on public comment? One shot. Uh, <laughs> motion on <laughs> public comment. Motion on public comment. We have a motion made and second to open public comments. Clerk will roll. Council Member Cazarelli? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Robel? Yes. Strumelo Burke? I, I didn't get that, Kelly. Public. It's for public, public comments, right. Marie. Yeah. Mayor Melman. Yes. So just to let residents know, this public comments will be limited to five minutes for each person. This is your time to discuss anything, anything. Sir, in the back, I know you want to talk before, so you can go first. All right. Yeah. Uh, Louis Meadows, 49 Lake Street in Belgium. Um, I am. I wanted to draw attention to an intersection on Belmont and Cross. Uh, it's right at the corner of school number four. Um, I know, uh, Chief, you tend to go out and take a look at certain areas to see if it's worth putting a stop sign. In, in certain spaces. I was just curious to see if there was a possibility to just take a look at that intersection. Um, it, it is cross street, um, primarily the Belmont side, but also the Magdalena side. Um, it, there, there is, there is uh, three ways. There's a two way stop there that, you know, in my opinion, should be a three way for uh, the times down there picking up my kids. It's an area where a car just kind of, they just swim right past that intersection. And the only areas where you can stop is on cross. But on the Belmont side, there is no stop sign. So maybe we can take a look at that. There is a stop sign on Cross. There's a stop sign on Cross to turn onto Belmont, but there's no no stop sign on Belmont actually. So when you so you can just uh, when you when you turn on North and you go right down Belmont to go to Franklin, you there's no you got the right away. 
you have it right away. But the, so now, when you actually cross into the area when the kids are getting picked up, there's cars that are just moving very quickly through that space. So I just want to see if there was. I know creating this physical barrier like a like a bump stop is not a smart idea, but maybe the stop sign there. So your complaints of speeding then? Yes. yes. Yeah. So what we'll do, sir, is we will uh, ask the police department to do a traffic study. It's something we yeah. do normal. Uh, to do traffic study, give us a little bit of time. We'll have a report on that. And then we always abide by the recommendations of our police department. Yeah. They recommend action. We then take action. Yeah, thank you. I just thank want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Phil Strange Antoni. I was over at the senior building on Friday, and it was raining and the water is cascading over the drains. I think that your gutters need to be cleaned out around the building. I, I don't know if you've seen it because times that you've been there, but they, have, uh, they need to be cleaned out. And there's a, another problem, which is 7-Eleven is on Union Avenue and um, Belleville Avenue. You put in, they put in a mountable curb on the Bevel Avenue side, you know, where they're not supposed to go. Well, it's not working because they are coming out there and they're tying up traffic. And I don't see any sign that says you can't go out there or make a, a turn. I don't know if there right is or there isn't, it. but they are turning onto Bevel Avenue when they shouldn't be. Well, out that side, they're supposed to go out, you need it. The so. chief is saying, he, it's his belief that they can make a right hand turn there. Right turn all the air, Phyllis. They can't go across track. But we'll, check, we'll, we'll check to see if there's a sign now. They are making But they're making, you know, some. Then that's a different situation. They're making they can't work, turn. some are trying to make a left, so I don't know if it's going to force it or any. And by number 10 school, some guys have done that with the traffic there when the kids are getting out of school because they're double parking. They're, they leave their cars running to go in there to get their kids, which is dangerous too. So I don't know if you can do something with putting out something out in the school where they can notify the parents that that's not good and you know somebody's going to get hurt. Chief, you have some Thank options, you. recommendations there? Thank you. Anybody else? Sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Michael Little. Uh, 13 months ago at the council meeting in January last year, I raised an issue which is tangent to what these people have been talking about. The pedestrian crosswalk on Union the at the corner of Overlook, from Megaro to the Delicatessen, there was an issue with the people parking not close, necessarily close to the sidewalk, uh, the crosswalk, but on the crosswalk. Yeah. And for a, after I raised the issue, the police did come by for a few weeks and alerted the people not to park there. But they have resumed it. And I have, I believe you, just in the last 10 days, both copies, on the, um, people are parking right on the crosswalk. So what, what I could do is, obviously the chief has it here, the chief is more than well aware of, of my complaints about this. Um, Saturday evening at 10 o'clock at night, the chief received some text messages from me of cars parked in crosswalks. And uh, we, he assured me that we're going to have our police department we, in force. But we are in the process. They are. And getting uh, devices that actually prevent we're about you, so about prevent you from parking in the course. So we so were two options. It's issued 13 months ago. I understand and that. And we issue summonses. Short of putting a police officer in the corner. Hours, corner. That's why we're in the process of buying devices that actually prevent a vehicle from actually parking in the it's a It's a physical... So you understand, sir, you'll actually be prevented from even attempting to right. park there. We're, we're, we're looking that's at two a, things. That's right a, a long-term fix. We're looking at two things. Uh, if you go to Lynnhurst, you go to some of the other towns, at certain corners, they have these bendable poles that are sitting there in the corner, in the street. Stop them. They actually... The which, which warn people to stop. For pedestrians. No, no, no. I mean, well, you can't okay. park your car there. Oh, okay. No, so it will stand up. It's physically prevents It's a physical right. barrier to right. prevent you from parking. So we, we are ordering those. Plus, on top of that, we're actually starting a pilot program shortly where a photo would be taken of your car illegally parked there. Police department be notified, ticket, and a summons will be issued. So we're doing two things. We're doing a physical barrier that would actually prevent you from parking there because you have to drive over this 
post. And the second thing is we're doing a pilot program that's going to take a picture, send it to the police department, police department can issue something. So we are aware of it. Okay. Trust me, he gets text messages from me all hours of the night sometimes. But in addition to that, parking on the crosswalk, they park right, they park up right against in. the crosswalk. It, it, which it, means it, that the pedestrian coming, they can't see if there's any traffic on the They press the button, the things flash, but the pedestrian, the motorists just ignore it. They drive I, it. I so came down today and I pressed the thing, the lights flashed, People ten cars went right. Well, I, right. Run I don't disagree mm -hmm. with you. They want to run you over. Yes, that. So, Chief well, and great. Mr. Manager, if we do have uh, options for that pilot program, we would make that work. We got that and we'll do a crosswalk initiative throughout the police department. Yeah, and it's, it's, the yellow lines on the, on the curb that they can't park. I, I would love crosswalk. to have yeah. painted curbs or painted Give me a can of paint, I'll do it myself. Right. <laughs> but then you're going to be calling us saying people are parked in the yellow curb anyway, so people don't care about that, unfortunately. But yeah, we are doing, we're working on two things, we really are. And he can tell you, he can show you his phone. Yeah. I sent him messages Saturday night. Same thing. Almost in the same area, actually. Okay, and talking about the children, there are school children who use that crossing in the mornings. There's no crossing guard because it's not heavily trafficked with the school children. But several times I have helped young children across that crosswalk. At 8 30 in the morning because there's nobody there to guide them through, the cars won't stop. Yeah. I, I, I don't disagree with you, sir. And we, we are proactively working on it. I gave you two solutions today that you're going to see shortly. I hope so. Yeah. Oh, I, I hope so too because he's tired of hearing me about it as well. <laughs> Anybody else? But we're in public comment, Mr. Fantoni. Yeah, uh, just to clarify what my wife was talking about, the 7 Eleven, they're not allowed to make left turns. So I objected when they approved, when the board approved a mountable curve. And I said, isn't that it's just a little curve? And so they're driving on, they're making left turns. What's happening, we, personally, we saw it on five occasions at least. They come out, they stop the traffic going west, and now the, the traffic going east won't let them in. So they block traffic. There's a simple solution. Required that they put a four inch lollicom in the middle of that mountable curve with a big sign, no left turn. Now they're going, I don't want one of these sign poles because they'll knock them down. They knock them down all over. A four inch lollicom, then they can't make the left turn. I think that would solve that problem. Bring that back um, the Mr. Manager, Mr. Chief, and somebody. Uh, several weeks ago, once again, you had another sewer backup on Marion Court and flooded the people's basement. The one house, 26 Marion Court, I think some of you know the Vandish one, that's the fifth time <coughs> I've worked on that basement. The last time, she got, the late Mrs. Vandish one got mad and yelled at Mr. Tucci and they paid me to, re to do the repairs. Once again, it goes down. Now, we've known this for like 20 Mr. years. Don't Tony, I don't want to waste your, your time on that. I want to save your time, but I will tell you that it has been more than well addressed, and Mr. Matt, the manager, can explain it. He was there uh, after hours, I think even on the weekend, and we actually have a con an outside contractor in place to actually make those changes finally. All right. Well, I hope you're going to replace that sewer pipe. If you look in when you turn there, you see there's about a, a 12 by 12 hole in the street that they just keep patching it's a sunken sewer pipe and it just keeps sinking. They paved it. Every time it rains, they left with a swim pool there for until the water evaporates. That's one problem. Uh, we had a similar problem on Essex Street. We replaced 200 feet of sewer line. They never got another problem in their basement since then. The other problem is, which pre-existed that sewer backup, the wall. Now, years ago, we found out one of the restaurants did not have the proper grease trap in there, right? The grease is settling into that collapsed pipe, and it blocks up. And these people are suffering. There's not only 26 Marion Court, just about six months ago, I fixed another backup right next door to them. They had a backup on there. I had to elevate the staircase on concrete blocks, and they're always getting worse. The other problem is, and this goes to bad zoning and bad planning. When they did Essex Park, and this before, well, there's two of them here, the councilman here, when they built Essex Park, four of those 30 some odd acres were wetlands. The developer filled them in, you can see how high it is, right next to the firehouse, those were wetlands. They built up like 10, 12 feet. Right after they did that, Marion Court, Celia Terrace, 
uh, Riverdale, all those people were coming to meetings. If you recall, Mr. Ravel, their pump, sump pumps were going 24 hours a day. The town realized it, the problem that was created by it. If you go look at Riverdale, Tom Harris went, they designed, they dug up about three feet in, in this tree from there, and they put sewer pipe, an additional pipe to bring it, it didn't solve the sump pump problem, but it took it away from the street. This is one, a classic example of why some of us fight this overdevelopment. All right? So the creation of Essex Park, which he raised himself up in the air, and then all those people have been suffering for the last 10, 15 years at Essex Park. So it's a compound problem. So Mr. Manager, if you're gonna, I hope you're going to replace that whole sewer line on Marion Court. I want to let you finish. I don't, certainly don't want to interrupt you. Well, um, all right, just one other thing. We're, the state's supposed to do Washington Indians. Now it's 2022, they said. Uh, Nutley, if you notice, is doing all their infrastructure. They're replacing gas and wall, water mains on there. Why aren't we doing that? It's coming to the in Belleville, actually, we are. Before yeah, we do it, uh, we're replacing our water and sewer lines in Washington. Yeah, we're getting high pressure gas lines. We're not replacing sewer lines because we're not going to replace sewer lines that don't need to be replaced. Obviously, that would be an unburdened expense. But yes, we're doing high pressure gas lines being replaced by the old ones. Well, how about the cleaning and lining? I know when I was in, we left off on Washington Dam near either Belleville Avenue or Rucker Street. And you never went any further. I, I get out of the conversation with Tom Harris. Yeah. I, not, I do need to wrap up, Mr. Franklin. Because every time there's a fire in the area around here, right, and they use the hydrants, my customers call me. I've got brown <coughs> water in my laundromat. So we've got to clean and reline these water mains. When they, they, the big surge of water use, it stirs up the sediment, and then my customers got brown clothes. <laughs> And my water lines are new, by the way. I replaced them when I bought the building a copper line at my expense. So I hope we're not going to pay. Thank you. So I hope, let's hear what you're going to do on Marion Court. Teresa, you want to just, we just said, so we, not, the, the backup that you're referring to that happened on Marion was brought to our attention in the middle of the night on Friday. We were there all day Saturday. And by Monday, we hired an outside company not only to jet the line, but more important, the video lines. Uh, the company provided our engineering public works department for a complete video. We've been able to identify about 60 feet that need to be replaced. So we have a, a complete... How many feet? About 60. Don't quote me on it, but, but, we, but the video was able to identify what um, the problem is. So hopefully it's going to be hopefully fixed once and for all. I hope so. And we're addressing the... Uh Grease traps. Well, the grease traps, that's a whole separate issue. That yeah, that's, that's a continuous maintenance. But they all leave that pipe. Yes. Ma'am in the back? I'm sorry. Sorry. Um, Just state your Teresa, name and address. Please. Teresa Dare, 178 Malone Avenue. Um, they didn't pick up our garbage on Wall Street. So, when? Today. When was that? Today. That's it. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Next did you call anybody? Yeah, call did, did you call? Uh, I think my husband did. I don't know okay. if he called down to New York. And that was as of, I guess, when you left to come here. Still not there. He texted me when I was sitting out in the hallway. So they Are we aware of any outage, uh, truck breakdown? Anything? No, this is the first first I'm hearing of it, and obviously I'll jump on it tomorrow. But Yeah, in the future, I mean, if you if you realize there's a promise of getting closer to 4 o'clock, if you were called, we could have had DPW go out and get it. Uh, as of now, we'll, we'll have somebody out there tomorrow. Yeah, it's the whole street, though. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Manager, that's something that we can handle first thing tomorrow, right? Yeah, yeah. Ro Roselle is working tomorrow. As much as Town Hall is off, the um, recycling pickup is will be in town, and I can also address the street supervisor for Roselle tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Droves. Yeah, just one simple question. With all this um, tax abatements and all the construction that will be going on, I'm just curious. I don't know if there's anything you could do, but are any of these to they're just to your knowledge, Mr. Droves? They're, they're, they're pilots. They're not. Well, well it doesn't make the difference. Tax abatement. I, I don't have to be technical. Technical on pilots, uh, well, but I just, but I, but just a question: Are any of these union jobs or prevailing union jobs 
we're not, they're not public projects. If they're public projects, right. we, we use prevailing wage. No, we're oh, yeah. no, I just, yeah. just wondering about that because we know all the projects going on. You know, I was just wondering if they do use... They're all private developers. I figure since they're getting a, a pilot break, they would at least utilize union no, pilot's work. not a break, Mr. Francis. The pilot's not a break. Well, just the choice of words, but you know what I mean. That's the most Your important opinion. thing. <laughs> just the one, uh, one more yeah, thing. They're, they're, they're private projects. Uh, some, some do use unions, some don't. We, we don't really have a say. We, we can ask, and, and I think we even have a resolution that we passed a while ago uh, supporting uh, public uh, unions, but uh, any project that yeah. we do. And I would hope if they're not, at least they're paying prevailing wage, which a lot prevailing of developers wage, right, like to go around, which I know yeah. that for a fact. Okay. Being, being, in the, being in the union for 32 years, so I know what they do. And that's why I lost my job, because of a non-union company. But um, just to have a question here. I asked it a couple of months ago. I didn't get an answer. And I'm just asking you again so I don't have to do an opera, because I don't get an answer on 50% of my operas. Um, well, that's a violation of law, so we take 28-12, which was passed on February 9, 1999. And in that there, I think there's, I disputed the Mayor appointing the me. planning board members. Now, all I'm asking is that there is an ordinance that says you can appoint the planning board members after, is there an ordinance after this date? This ordinance specifies that the council as a whole will appoint the planning board members, the class four. 19-1, you're talking Well, I'll give you the number right now. Ordinance number 2812, it was passed on February 9, 1999. Well, I hope you can give me an answer. Or if not, I'll do an Oprah, which I don't sure. want to. But hopefully by the next meeting, maybe you can give me an answer. Just repeat this, or town attorney can write it down. I'm familiar with 19-1. Okay, so ordinance 2812. Before we get the point planning board. February 9th, 1999. Yes. I have the ordinance home if you need a copy, if you can't find it. Kelly, are you aware of any such ordinance? You have to look at it. It's the online code, though. So I, mean, if, I mean, I'll give you a copy of it if you can need it. I, I'd actually like to solve it right now. Yeah, I would too. I don't want to test exactly what I'm asking. 19, 20, can we have access to the online ordinance code from the FAR code book? It's right on our website. I have the actual ordinance. I don't I don't know if it's there. I have the actual ordinance. But give us the number. We're on the internet here. We can look at it. 2812. 28. That's the ordinance number. What's, what's the code What's it section? say in the body? What's the code say? You know what? I'll tell you what I'll tell you. I'll make a copy and I'll give it to Kelly tomorrow. How's that? Okay. I'm 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 gonna say it's nineteen dash one, which is you know, I I just wrote from what I could see on it, but I'll give her a copy of it. Okay. Fair. Ma'am and about. Hi. My garbage. Name's, yes, garbage. My name's Kelly Durr. I live with them. My father, Francis Durr, called DBW today and there was no answer at all. What time did it call? Um, it was before 4 o'clock, though? Yes. Okay. He knows when they close. Cause okay. he Unfortunately, it's not the first time I've heard that. And we've talked to the manager about dealing with non answered calls and rollover lines. Uh, I'm frustrated because I have to hear residents like yourselves that have to come out at night and complain about that. So, Mr. Manager, can we find out why nobody answers the phone sometimes? I, yeah, absolutely. It, I'm sorry. I, I just wanted, to, I'm writing my notes. The, your dad, who called the Public Works, he works for Public Works? Yes. Oh, he does? Yes. So, so he called himself or he just called the office? He called the office. Oh, no, no. I'm just, again, I, I want to get to the bottom of it, so I, I'll jump on that Thursday morning. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we can't have calls not get answered. I mean, just, just like we cannot have employees going to launch at the same time. Anybody else? Sir. Good evening, Michael Sheldon, 47 Flight Street. Uh, just to resolve a little bit of confusion that took place earlier tonight about whether or not Bubble Schools are open tomorrow. Yes, they are. Town Hall is closed, but Bubble Schools are open. Also, just to confirm, Black History Month celebration is taking place next Thursday. Uh, February 20th at the high school from 5 to 8.30 p.m. to the high school auditorium. Uh, first question tonight, uh, the ordinance that was introduced number three with the Silver Lake Urban Renewal LLC, this is the Bel proposed Belmont project? No. This isn't No, I'm sorry, you do an introduction? Uh, introduction, uh, uh, ordinance uh, number three. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, so what is changing? 
What is, what uh, it's just the name of a, the name of a, the name of the developer. Just the yeah. name of the developer. And what is, there's a new developer now? Mr. Stolar is no longer... Right. Stolar is no longer. Stolar is no longer. Who's the new developer? It's the actually owner of the property. Black Oak. Oak. Uh, Black Oak. It's the owner of the oh, property. I thought they were always together. They were. He's just leaving. That's all. He's, he's gone, and so Black Oak is taking over. Thank you. Um, in regard to the, the two ordinances that you had the second reading approved tonight, two and three, um, the question, do you have any numbers at hand for the projected revenue for the 24 units? When, I, when I've looked at previous... LLT agreements, usually there's a stipulation of what the projected income will be, and you said that the tax rate was going to be 10%. So do you have those numbers uh, at hand tonight? Do you know what, how much tax revenue are we going to actually realize from? I've seen them. I'm not quite sure if they're packaged in here. No, they're saying no. They're not. I've seen them. They go through our financial people and they should I, negotiate. Should I submit an open? Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Thank it's you. definitely there because that's right. how we make our determination. Right. I don't want to burden Ms. Kavanaugh any more than necessary. Uh, the, uh, uh, I was looking forward to iCompass being available tonight. It's being delayed. We're going to, I think Ms. Kavanaugh said maybe next month. Is that the case? It's not going to happen in February, sometime in March? I, I don't have an exact date. You don't have an exact date. All right. Uh, as you may be aware, um, earlier this year, Governor Murphy announced that uh, he's planning to have a $500 million uh, bond referendum on the ballot this November, specifically to help uh, less affluent communities <coughs> remove red lines. Obviously, Belleville would be in that category. I think it might be a good idea for this council, this governing body, to have a resolution in support of that, since we would be one of the primary beneficiaries from that $500 million bond if it's, uh, it's approved this November. So something for you to, to consider. Another way. Uh, earlier tonight, it was announced by Mr. Iacono that we have a $1.5 million grant to beautify Washington Avenue. Uh, as Mr. Frantitoni reminded all of us, the state's coming in 2022 to basically redo the entirety of Washington Avenue, at least in the Belleville section. So are we going to be wasting that one and a half million dollars. We're going to do some projects to beautify, but then two years later, the state's going to come in and probably rip apart anything we do. I mean, are, are, you, are we coordinating with the state so that that $1.5 million is utilized to its maximum extent? Uh, there's, there's complete coordination and uh, some of the beautification problem, uh, parts of the beautification grant and program will not have anything to do with what the state is doing. All right. So if we, put when, new, if we put new lighting into... Right, when we talk about the, the, the state project in 2022, that's mostly, think of that as asphalt curb. Right. This is sidewalk and lights and decorative things. All right, all right. All right. Uh, just one last thing and I'll sit down. Um, I had a question about the, the township website. The, the, the design the template that's being used for Belleville is also used for these two other municipalities, Lynn, her, um, Linden, and Garfield, if I remember correctly. That that design template, is that proprietary? Is that something that Alphador created or did you did you purchase that? that so just to clarify, it's used in about twenty municipalities. Right. And yes, it's something that's proprietary to my it's company, proprietary. Which we give, I just want to let everybody know right. I'm in the business of municipal websites. That's how I make a living. That's right. what I've done for fifteen years. Right. I have twenty five government contracts. We right. give Belleville the service for absolutely free. As opposed to the previous website, that cost us about sixteen or seventeen thousand dollars a year. I don't want to rehash because we were always, during the 2010 to 14 period. Alpha Dog built the township over 120 thousand dollars for website services. So, you know, you, you try to. I, I don't want to go. Away. We've already had this discussion. But what I'm asking, so the website design that you use for Belleville and other municipalities is something that Alpha Dog created. My designers, yeah. Your designers created. Do you license that to other other parties? Yes, no. All right, this is an interesting question because I found a company that uh, is much more extensive than Alpha Dog, which has been in, in, in existence much longer than Alpha Dog, which has the same design template that Alpha Dog is using. So now there's a question of copyright infringement. How did they manage to use, create a design that apparently preceded what Alpha Dog is using? I, I would love to we'll, let my we'll patent attorney find I'm going to contact out. the company, let them know about this, and their lawyers can talk to your lawyers. 
no idea what that's about. All right. I'm going to let my patent attorney find out because if they took my code, that's a problem. You don't have a patent. Yeah. You don't have a patent. I said patent attorney. Uh, eight Grove they also uh, held copyright, by the way. Copy. Jerry DeGuerre Show, 8 Grove Street. My question is uh, involving resolution number eight. Exactly what is it? There's an actual title in the town for this position? Is that the court? Yes. That's, yes. The that's the Thursday. That's the court. That's to their Thursday court office. The answer to the question, court. yes, there's a title for that. Okay. And, and this is for, for court officers, is what you're saying? Yes, sir. Yes. Oh, so, so their duties will be just limited to the court? Yes. Are they armed? At this time. At this time, yes. Yeah. They are armed. Yes. yes. And what is the salary for these positions? Dollars an hour. 25 dollars Twenty-five, twenty-six. It's, oh, so it's, it's part-time. It's yeah. part-time. It's a court officer. It's a court officer. Court officer. Court officer. Yeah. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Sorry. Frank Fleischman, E30. Sorry. Hold on one second. It's not additional monies. That's replacing. Well, that wasn't the question. The question well, I just want to put that out there. So just, I don't think just, we're just to clarify, we're, we're making a change to our court dates. The current yeah. officers can't work that same date. We have to hire new people to work the new dates. There's no additional There's No additional expenses. Sure. All right, Frank Fleischman, 833 Main Street. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say that um, it's uh, very encouraging. Um, I usually pass down Main Street, past the Key property on my way to work. The past two days, I've seen an excavator there uh, going in, and hopefully that's the beginning of the work on the um, on the warehousing, that sort of thing that's supposed to go there. So that's an encouraging sign. Um, I wanted to ask again, um, I took a look at some websites for municipalities here in Essex County, um, Livingston, Montclair, Cedar Grove, they're all uh, council manager. And what I noticed is that in their code books, they have <clears throat> NJSA section 4055D for their membership. This is the only town under council, council manager form of government in this county where I see 19.1. Do you still stand by this? That's our order. Uh, it's, it's what? a secret. I don't imagine how a state, a local ordinance could supersede a state ordinance. It does not. It does how not. can you have both then, honestly? You don't, you don't have both. It's our, our local ordinance cites the state statute. Correct me if I'm wrong, Councilor. We don't supersede at all. 40, the chapter, section 40 is completely different than 19.1. Anybody can see that, okay? And it's very interesting that over the summer, 19.1 showed up on the planning board site miraculously. Not just so the residents or anybody listening to this knows, 19-1 is our bevel ordinance governing the planning board. It didn't just fall out of the sky. It's been here for years before me, and you never had a complaint about and it. And isn't it interesting that previous administrations never used it? You don't think that's odd? I didn't think they use it. It's our laws. Our laws. Anybody here takes out their phone, goes to our website, clicks on our ordinance code, which is not hosted by us. It's hosted by our third-party codification company, mm -hmm. and clicks on the section called Planning Board or Planning Board Appointments, and you're going to end up at 19-1, which is our municipal code, and you can read exactly what what you're talking about. It's not it's it's a conspiracy. You think it Absolutely. Is. You're inviting a lawsuit. I can guarantee you. I mean... I don't have I don't have the deep pockets or anything like that. I don't know a lot of people who do. But honestly, someday a developer or a president is going to get wise because there's other people who are, and the town's going to get sued. I'm not and sure I don't really what feel like that. I really feel like my, ta my taxes paying for a bogus lawsuit. What is your complaint, though? My complaint is that this ordinance is not this ordinance. We're dealing with two different ones. You deal with or local ordinance and state statute. And state statute would override this, don't you think? I I. I think I would agree with that, and I think our council would agree that we cannot supersede state statutes. Well, so what is the issue, more. though? I'm still confused what the issue is. I'm basically saying 19.1. But what is the issue in 19.1 that you think is being superseded? Yeah, yeah. Or but, uh, class four appointments. You you made changes, didn't you? Yes. Okay. You're not allowed to do that according to state law. That's not true. You want me to read the state law? Because you you like to read portions of it. So let's just read it. You you want to give me the whole thing? You got it. 40, what? <coughs> That's all right. I mean, I just, I know we're not going to sell this, because... <laughs> Mr. Manager? Sorry about that. Yeah, I think I have it here somewhere. Okay. 
trying to find a copy of it somewhere here. I'm going to pull it out actually. Mm -hmm. If you go to Just Law or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. it's NJS. Somebody read to me, Steve? 535 DJ31. We have the apartment. I've read this a hundred times. I, I just want, I'm reading literally what was handed to me. Mm -hmm. uh, not reading anything else I found online. Okay. A class four. Mm -hmm. For my class four? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to read exactly what I was asked to read. Class four. Other citizens of municipality to be appointed by the mayor or, then there's a comma, in the case of manage, council manager form of government pursuant to the optional municipal charter law, a bunch of years and things there, or the municipal manager form of government law by council, if so provided by aforesaid ordinance. Otherwise, it is the appointment of the mayor, unless you have an ordinance that says you don't have that authority. No. Actually, we have an ordinance, and it says it gives me the authority. So I'm still very confused by this. It says in the case of council manager, read it again. Mr. Frantantonio, you've got to follow commas, Mr. Frantantonio. Other citizens of the municipality, comma, to be appointed by the mayor, or comma, now you got to read, you got to listen to the whole yes. thing. In the case of council manager, former government, we pursue are. it to the optional municipal charter law, or municipal manager, former government, by the council, if so provided by an aforeseen ordinance. So it's the council's appointment if there's an ordinance saying that. We actually have an ordinance, and it says mayor's appointment. What year? I'm very confused as to what you're talking about. We all are. Yeah. We are. I'm very confused. You're confused by yeah, it. Says right by, you just read it. The council manager for the government. The council appointed. Thank you. Thank you. And the council <laughs> just appointed. You can keep that. You can keep that. I just read it. Right there. Okay. Anybody else? The council else? did the right thing December of 18th. The council appointed Guamish, which was legal. Thank but then in February, president. when you gave her a town just, job, it became illegal. Clearly, you have no interest in actually in any kind of explanation. Well, Anybody else for public comment? Motion to close public. Motion to close public. Oh, ma'am. Oh. 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 Almost got you. Good evening. This is Alan. I'm Michelle Louise. I live on uh, 2 Bell Terrace. And I, I hear everybody here, they have a lot of complaints, and I really understand they have complaints about landscape, and they have complaints about streets, they have complaints about a lot of things in this town that are not right. I actually have to thank you. I'd like to thank you for taking mental illness seriously. It's, it's something that affects people invisibly. And I really could care less about the town's streets right now. I could care less about gutters. What I care about is that I have a compassionate mayor, not a conniving one despite what everybody thinks. So again, I'd like to thank you, but I also have a question. Do any of your officers have um, training in mental health first aid? It's my only question. I, I, I'll find out for you. Is that, we don't normally go by, I'll let the chief answer that if he knows the answer, but do you have anything else to say or is that? Okay. Again, thank you very much, Mayor Mellon. I thought so, that was something we were Yes, considering. thank you. J just so you know, it's a, it's a joint effort. We, we collectively here passed the level of statement free township. Um, that was an initiative of the council. We depend on the town, the count, town council down behind. We also support the rubber ducky. Uh, cause uh, we participate in those fundraisers. We, 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 it's a collective effort that I think the entire council and a lot of our employees yes. actually take part in. So, but I, I do thank you for that. Chief, you yes, we do. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Iacono. We also instituted a township wide wellness program. I didn't and realize that. So, all that too. something you so might not be aware of, only a week or wellness book, just to, only a meeting or two ago, not just my officers. We brought in a outside company, it's relatively cheap, it's about $1,000 a month, and any one of our 350 employees that want to seek help, seek counseling, have someone to talk to, they now have access to that above and beyond what their medical benefits would cover. 24 hours a day. 24 hours, and I think the first time we used it was with our fire department. After um, we have, our fire department responded to a fire in Nutley a few weeks ago where several people were, were, were didn't make it, they were killed. And uh, Belleville Fire Department actually transported the seven or nine year old victim. And uh, our, that was one of the first chances that we had for our employees to actually talk to somebody if needed. 
uh, above and beyond what their health benefits would, would include. But I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Motion to close. Motion to close. Public. You're hung up, Maria. You're back. Oh, we, have okay. a, we have a motion no, made and second to close. Kelly, I could never go with this phone again. Okay. I didn't understand. It was horrible. Okay. Thank you. 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 Um, okay. So we have a motion made and second to close public comment. Uh, we have roll call. Council Member Casarelli. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Robel. Yes. yes. Schumel Burke. What is this for, Council? We're closing the public comments. Okay. Yes. Mayor Melnick. Yes. That's not nice. Who's that? Move the, move the consent agenda? Yes, we have a consent agenda. Motion to move the consent agenda. I'm just looking at the new stuff. They're talking about the consent agenda, Councilwoman. We have a motion made and second to move the consent agenda. Any deletions? Any deletions, Councilwoman? No, I have none. Nope. Oh. Oh. I'm going to get in trouble for smiling. Yep. That's all I'm doing is smiling. Uh, that's it. So we're going to make a motion made. Second clerk call roll. Move the consent agenda. Council member Cazzarelli. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Rovell. Yes. Truman Lober. Yes. Mayor Melman. Yes. All the ordinances. Resolutions are approved. Councilman, did you did not have anything else? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Thank you. You really thank didn't you. have anything else, right? No, did you? Could we, no, we talk about the IT? I'm good, thank you. Yes, sir. We're good. Anything for new business, Councilwoman? No, I just want to, you know, just say that uh, uh, some of it I did not hear well, so just want to go on record to say that. Okay, duly okay. noted. We have until the moment we adjourn the meeting to change any votes. Are we changing any votes? We're good. I just want to give her the opportunity if she didn't hear anything correctly then. Do you want to change any of your votes, Murray? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any motion to close? close. All in favor? Aye. Thank you, Councilman. Bye-bye.